So, some material constants that we're familiar with um, as a function of this strain tensor, right? So, we've already defined stress previously. Now we have a notion of strain, and we can come up with some of these material constants from that. So, our, our typical... Um, Young's modulus, right, we, we have a bar and we apply a stress to the end of it and it causes some strain, but the stress is, the only stress we're applying is, is it's uniaxial, right, so the only stress in the, in the stress tensor is S11, everyone else is zero. Right? And as we pull on it, the bar is going to deform. Let me uh, use a different color. So we're going to pull on the end of it, and the bar is going to deform. All right? And so it's going to be strained sigma 1, 1, it's also going to be strained in the other two dimensions, right? It's going to be strained in the other two dimensions, uh, sigma 2, 2 and sigma 3, 3, but those guys are going to cancel each other. And so what you're left with is just this, and, this, and it's this ratio that is your Young's modulus, right? So we're all familiar with that and that we have stress versus strain, and we have a linear line like that, and we, the slope of that line is the Young's modulus. And in fact, in your lab last week, you measured that guy, right? Or you inferred it. You, you actually measured force and displacement, but you inferred the <coughs> Young's modulus, right? So then the bulk modulus, just so if the Young's modulus is the ratio of uniaxial stress to uniaxial strain, the bulk modulus, and we've already talked about this when we talked about compressibility, right? But the bulk modulus is the ratio of the mean stress, the mean volumetric stress or hydrostatic stress, over the volumetric strain. So the mean stress is one third the trace of the stress tensor, right? So the volumetric stress is the st trace of the stress tensor, and there's three components, so we're going to divide by three to give us an average, okay? And that'll give us the volumetric stress. We divide that by the volumetric strain, and that's the bulk modulus. So this is material's resistance to hydrostatic compression, okay? So the shear modulus, then if we take our little cube and we deform it in a pure shear like this, then, then the shear modulus, G, is the ratio of the stress, one, you know, the shear stresses, 1, 3 uh, over shear strain, 1, 3. So it, if the material is isotropic, meaning it has infinite planes of symmetry, then we could use 1, 3, 1, 2, 2, 3. We'd all get the same measurements, right? If, if the material did not have a plane of symmetry like that, then we'd have to do something more complex. So that's why these it does say in the title here, isotropic materials. So we're talking about a material that has an infinite number of symmetric planes. Okay. And so the, the Poisson ratio, the Poisson ratio is the amount of, if I take a material and I stretch it, it's the ratio of the stretch to the shrink, if you will. So it's going to stretch, if you go back to my first picture here, right, I stretch it actually, actual, axially, and it shrinks uh, vertically, right? And it's that ratio of strains the axial strain to the vertical shrink that gives you the Poisson ratio. 
And it really just depends on the sign convention. Here I've shown it where the sign convention is positive in compression, but just understand that you, you all, for all natural materials, the Poisson ratio has to be positive. It's actually a big area of material research um, to have materials that have a negative Poisson ratio. Because it's very, very, I used to work in uh, ballistics. And if, if you can have a material that have a, nor, a, a, a negative Poisson ratio, it would make a great, like, bulletproof vest. Because that, what that would mean is when, when a bullet impacted the material, the material around it, instead of moving away, would move towards it. And, and it would become more dense, and that would make a really good. So there's no natural materials that have that behavior, but we're working on some man-made materials that, that do. So here's a couple of uh, kind of typical Young's modulus values uh, in gigapascals. So that's 10 to the ninth, right? Pascals for a couple of different types of rock. These are histograms. So this comes from a handbook where they mold, where they measured multiple types of sandstone, limestone, and shale at varying porosities, and they measured the Young's modulus and they produced these histograms. So it just gives you a flavor of where you know if you just kind of close your eyes and pick up a sandstone, you know it, it's going to have it's likely to have a, a Young's modulus in the, say, 40 to 60 GPA range. Right? It's, uh, you know, the, a limestone would be more in the, you know, 25 to 65 or 70 range. And there's not a lot of data here on shales. This is an old text, but, um, and likewise, typical Poisson ratios. So, again, you know, Poisson ratio is always, um, written in a fraction, so, you know, what you can think again, it's the ratio of axial stretch to vertical strength, or, you know, long, let's say horizontal stretch to vertical shrink. And so if you think about it as a percentage, right, then, you know, 10%. So if I stretch, if I stretch something, if I, if I stretch a sandstone by X, it's going to, sh you know, horizontally, it's going to shrink vert vertically by 10%, according to the Poisson ratio. And so this is pretty typical. Most, most rocks have a Poisson ratio between 1 and 3. And, uh, you know, um, metals, metals would be between, like, 2 and 3.5, and something like that. Um, what if the Poisson ratio was... One half. Huh? It would be, what is the name for it? You know what the name is? Incompressible is what it is. So the, the way to think about this is that it's easier now to think in compression. So if I take a, if I take a, um, if, a if a material has a Poisson ratio of a half, and I squeeze it horizontally, it's going to stretch out vertically by the same amount I squeezed it. So if I squeeze it this way, it's going to stretch that way. Therefore, the material is incompressible, meaning it, there's no volume change, right? There's no density change. I squeeze it, it grows by the same amount. <clears throat> Rubbers actually are very close to incompressible. And Porous rocks filled with fluid can, you know, under pressure, can approach incompressibility conditions. 